Hello everyone and welcome to the Collegio di Iberia. I'm Kiria Du Papillon and I'm your facilitator today. Today we have a wonderful class being led by Doña Illuminada Eugenia de Guadalupe to, on 16th century Spanish sleeves. Throughout the session today, if you can just send messages through, through, through the chat and I will pass them on to Illuminada to, as the class goes. Welcome Illuminada and thank you very much. One of the things that characterizes Spanish garb in the late 16th century, the second half, is the sleeves. And there's about four basic styles. Before I start introducing those to you though, I wanna talk about how the pattern for modern sleeves is different than the pattern for uh, period sleeves. And the patterns that I've gotten for the period sleeves are primarily from Alsega's Book of Patterns. Our modern sleeve, if you do any sewing, you'll, you'll remember the top of the shoulder is at the center of the sleeve that you cut out. But on the period sleeve, the seam is not under the arm. The seam is at the front of the sleeve. So what you need to do is take part of this off and move it over. And you'll see in period patterns, the sleeve goes up and down and back up. Now, the other thing is that the depth of the sleeve from here to here, the depth of the armhole is not nearly as much as we use in a modern sleeve because the modern clothes fit much more closely and don't hang out over the edge of the uh, collar, I mean, the shoulder bone. So that sleeve, doesn't need as much difference in order to fit into that arm's eye. So, let me take this down and we're ready to get started on the first sleeve. Uh, the four kinds of sleeves that I've divided them into are the under sleeve, which would be a sleeve that was usually on the closest layer over the chemise, but under the ropa. And often that's a jacket type top and it's got a closely fitted sleeve on the arm. Then off of that, you've got something often at the top of the shoulder, which I'm calling a shoulder, shoulder cap. And then you've got kind of a roundish looking sleeve, which um, I'll show you how it's cut out. Um, and then you've got the hanging sleeves. Then you've got crazy hanging sleeves. So, um, We'll get started on those four different kinds. And if you have questions, just type them into the, um, the notes and my lovely helper will feed those questions to me um, when they come up. Okay, let me take this down. What's the name of that down so you can see? Uh -oh. I think we're good. The top would be ouch, hardly any arch at all. And the under sleeve would simply be about two fingers lower at the top. Two fingers is a really good measure for that. And you say, how can that fit into my arm's eye? Because the arm's eye on period garb is usually farther out than on modern garb. So that's why the, um, the, ar the armhole fits better, okay? So, are we doing okay, Kiria? Okay. It's great. No questions so far. Okay, now I better figure out how to share the screen again. There it is. I tried it out earlier. Oh, there it is. The slideshow. One sec. I'm in the wrong place. Slideshow. There we go. Now, this one I included just because it's such beautiful sleeves and you can really see the curve to the arm. And there would be a seam at the back and a seam at the front. And you see that her sleeve, the head of her sleeve doesn't really go all the way up where we would have it modernly. It stops much lower down. Here's a collection of sleeves. This one has a fuller head, which, is, which makes the puff. Uh, this sleeve is very much the same 
and it's got bands sewn on so that it, it poofs out in between the bands. And men's and women's sleeves were very much the same here. Uh, this one, I want to call to your attention the stripes. See if it has striped sleeves. It is more than likely Spanish. Here again, you see the I've had a good re request that if you can, can you mention the dates of the images as we go through them? These are all the second half of the 16th century. Thank if they're not, I'll, I'll mention that, okay? And when, I can't seem to pause this. When we get to the, um, I'm just gonna click through to where we were. Um, when we get to the, oh man, let's try again. Um, yeah, all of them are second half of the 16th century. And let me see if I can go back and get back into it. Because that's basically what I do with the second half of the 16th century. Um, but we'll see the stripes repeated again and again. And um, we'll look later at the tops of the sleeves. And you can see the seam line front and back. This is a unique sleeve, which I'm in the process of trying to duplicate, which is done with a really long strip of fabric that's wrapped around the arm. You even see the little baby, oops, you even see the little babies with those sleeves. This is in here just to show you that sometimes there's not an undersleeve. You see the chemise sleeve under the larger oversleeve. This is, tends to be more Italianate with the, um, the cutouts, uh, but it comes from the Spanish style. Here again is a men's sleeve of the same, very tight, Fitted sleeve. Now it's important that you get an angle at the elbow so that your arm will bend. Um, this I put in here for the man's sleeve again. And that's filler. And sometimes the stripes are actually in chevroni. And it matches on the on the jerkin, which is kind of cool. And this one I just thought was absolutely beautiful with the the trim down the, the outside of the sleeve. And you see that the seam is actually in here, so that can lay down nicely on the, on the, uh, on the outside of the sleeve. Okay. So, I think we're done with that one. Not sure. Okay, any questions on those? And please understand I'm trying to zip through this quickly. Yael, are we doing okay? No questions so far, thanks, Illuminata. Okay. Let me get the next one up then. Okay. This is a split sleeve in that the sleeve, the over sleeve is split down the outside. Um, it's also probably slit down the seam. And let's see if I can something. Uh, I can't, we can't see anything at the moment in Imanala. Oh, we can't. Thank you for telling me. Let me stop sharing and I'll try to in again. And it's really hot here in Kayud, so I'm kind of. I think you you'd overlook, overlook um, your, seeing your hair if you wanted to take your hat off. It might be a little cooler with your hat off. <laughs> oh, no, I can't do that. I know, it's a little bit of déshabille, as they say in French, but... <laughs> well, no, my hair is really messy on me. <laughs> ah, yes, we can see that. So I need to put a slideshow. Okay? Yep. Okay. So... Uh, it's split down the... Or where, we're, see the we're, we're seeing a kind of set of images. We're not seeing the one larger image. Oh. Okay, let me go back. I'll go all the way up. Let me try again. Let me do a search. Oh, I want to search. There we go. 
five, four, three. Are we good now? A lady in a lovely red dress? Uh, we can't see anything but you. Okay. I tried this twice this morning and made sure it worked, so let me try it again. And I'll take this moment while you're, while you're fiddling Thank to you. remind everyone that this is being recorded just so that you um, are aware. Are we good now? Yes, that's oh. great. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, I'm going to try and slow it down. Pause. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot to show you how this is made. Uh, I'll show you the pattern for these sleeves when I finish the session. Um, these sleeves are all basically the same shape and they're cut in different ways. This one has a cut, um, basically the front half of the sleeve. The seam on this sleeve is actually down the back. And it's all one piece from the top to the bottom. Let's see, here again is that same sleeve. The, the slit in the front is narrower, but all the way to the bottom. Uh, this is the same sort of sleeve, except that it is cut all the way to the back and tied together. Are we understanding what I'm saying, I hope? Thumbs up, maybe? Okay. <laughs> yes, I think we are. Okay. This, this cape, cloak, has the, the big sleeves like we're looking at on it. That's why that picture is there. Um, this one is a narrow sleeve that's got multiple slits, probably one in the front, one down the side, and one in the back. It wouldn't have one under the arm because that would make too much bulk under the arm. Here's another lovely uh, cutouts, but she's got the big sleeve on the out, on the um, front over it, and the slit is straight up and down from the top to the bottom. Here's another picture of that. Um, whether it's slit all the way here or not is hard to tell. There's the trim there that indicates it might be. And you can see on the inside here it is slit. I suspect that it's only slit cross, whoops, crosswise on the inside. This is, um, ooh, okay. This is a much earlier, this is about 1420s, um, and it's got the bell shape at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure how it's there. Here is that same, um, the sleeve is cut like a D with a slit down the front and a slit across. And as you can see, it can fasten or unfasten, and it would do that in both directions. Because if it's cold out, you want to close up your sleeve to keep you warm. I have a question for you, Illuminata. Yes. Do you know when it came to be common for them to have the look where it appears that their arms aren't actually inside the sleeve? Um, if that makes sense, that's from Lorenzo. So I think that's where the hanging sleeve is com is completely... Um, completely uh, open? Uh, okay, Lorenzo, do you mean open all the way up to the top so that their arm comes all the way out? Like a bit like what you can see in the image right now. Yes, he says. Okay, uh, that's a whole different kind of sleeve, which I've got another set of pictures on. Okay, and I'll talk about it then. Here again is a bigger sleeve that's got slits in it. Here's one similar to what you were talking about, Lorenzo. It's slit all the way up to the top, and it would be slit all the way down to the wrist. So you can see the whole arm here, okay? And I'm going to talk in just a minute about how I'm to the end, so we will exit that. And I'm going to talk Leonor, about... Leonor says, um, you're talking about an over-gown sleeves rather than the under-gown sleeves at this point in time, aren't you? Yes. And just so you know, it's 15 minutes in. Okay, I'm doing pretty good there. Um, I'm always closed. Let me go. Okay. Close. Okay. Nothing like that. Ah, somehow I'm not seeing anything. 
Well, I'm going to assume that you can all see me good. Can you all see me good? Yes or no? Uh, we can see you. Oh, wait, um, I know what's wrong. We can mostly see us. There we go. There we go. Okay, this thing would have been cut. Oh, yes, this is it. It's cut with a slight V at the top of the arm. Oops, let me move it down. A V at the top of the arm. That's the whole of the arm heading. The sleeve is then cut in a circle, a circle, and the cuff is cut at the bottom. Now, you're going to put a slit in it. That slit is going to go right here. You can slit it this way, you can slit it that way, you can slit it both ways. Any questions on that one? I have a question actually, Illuminata. Um, so you've got the whole sleeve pattern there. Was this, was this, would the sleeve that slash been kind of cut all the way through and so it becomes actually a two-part sleeve or is it actually literally still the whole sleeve and with a slice through it? Okay. This is this kind of sleeve. Mm -hmm. There's a seam at the back. There was a slit cut up the front. Okay. It can be just a short slit or it can be quite a long slit. You can also have slits cut so that the opening is actually like a cross. And so it isn't, it isn't um, a two-piece sleeve. It is still just a one-piece sleeve. With no, a just slit. a one-piece sleeve, yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And if you look at Alcega's uh, patterns, that's how he shows it made. It's all in the one, um, I'd like to call it a pomegranate shape. With yeah. a little notch at the top for the top of the sleeve. Yeah. And it's very, very straight at the top. It's not rounded like we expect in modern sleeves. Okay? Yep, thank did, I make that, did I make that clear to everybody? Okay, great. Now the next one we're going to look at. Oh, wait, I better share screen first. Um, I'm getting there, guys. I know what I'm doing. Oops. So it's obviously, I think I just left the class. Tag. Okay. Uh, there we go. Oh no. I think I left the return. There we go. Okay. Share screen. Okay, um, I think this is the kind of sleeve that uh, we're Senior was asking seeing, about. We're still just seeing you. Uh, you might have felt the share button as opposed to just bringing up it. I'm not sure. Let's try again. I do this all the time, really, I do. Sharing screen, okay. Now? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. I think this is the kind of sleeve that Signor was asking about, which is hanging totally behind, as is this one. Let me pause this. Um, if I can go back. Yes, I can. I'll, I'll stay on this one because it's exactly the same as the other one. The sleeve is actually very straight and on ladies' gowns particularly, it can go all the way down to the ankle and it just hangs there. Um, and it's so, it's a full sleeve, but it's sewn all, all to the back of the sleeve. Of the arms are. 
did that answer your question, sir? So is it possible, I mean, in that, in, in that image, the gentleman has his under kind of sleeve from his under kind of jerkin, I guess, um, on display. Could he yes. have had the alternatively put his arm through yes. that decorative sleeve? So it's not yes. just purely decorative. It is still a functional sleeve. Usually it is. Once in a while, you'll see one that you look at it and you go, either the painter didn't know what they were doing or it's really not a functional sleeve. I would say from the shape of this, it is a functional sleeve because you see the little bit of curve there, it gives him the ability to bend his arm, okay? And I wear sleeves like this often because it gets very warm really high. Okay, now this is a different shape of hanging sleeve, which I'm gonna show you the pattern for in just a moment. And it's cut with the arm side in the straight front sleeve, and then it's really cut kind of like a triangle with this being the fold so that it's, um, it unfolds to almost a square. Same sleeve. This one appears to have a seam in the back, although that could just be a fold. This is one of my favorite sleeves that I still haven't done, but you can see that it's that round cut sleeve like we looked at in the previous set. And the back of the sleeve is slit horizontally, whereas the front is slit vertically. I'm thinking this must have been lined with something like um, the stuff you put in a hat, buckram, or in modern days we do something like pellon, or maybe canvas. Illuminata, with yes. the sleeve um, that hang, hung from the back, going back a little, um, uh, Lorenzo wanted to know when that kind of became common um, for that the, the sleeve that we were discussing with the kind of dangling. Um, you see all of these sleeves concurrently throughout the second half of the 16th century. This particular picture I can tell you is late period because of the huge rock and the rosettes on the shoes. Those come in in the 70s, the, the rough more in the 90s. The rough is very, very late that bit. okay? Great, thank you. And um, if you get a chance, we'd love to know where uh, um, references of where you uh, kind of got your, inf your information about gonna... the actual sleeve shapes and, and things. Um, I think people are very curious about, for example, Achel Alchega and things like that. I'll say that, okay. Um, this is that same, same, almost rectangular sleeve, but it's fastened along the front. Very, I mean, it's the same sleeve as, I'm trying to go back. It's the same sleeve as the one before this, as this. It's simply fastened together several places at the front. And that keeps the sleeve in front of her arm rather than dangling behind. Okay? Yep. The stripy sleeves, and you can see a little bit right here of a larger oversleeve that, again, would be on her overgown, whereas this would be on her undergown. And this is just a real pretty picture that I put at the end of the slideshow because it's got those same kinds of sleeves on it. This is more of an allegorical picture. Okay. I'm doing on time. Uh, 11.25, so you're doing fine. Oh, so I'm doing good, thank you. We do have a okay. question while you're, while you're fishing. Um, yeah. Michael asked a, a kind of tangential question. Um, yeah. When they see portraits of Charles V and Philip II and the like in a mix of armour and court garb, it looks like yes. they're wearing their fancy embellished sleeves under their arm armour. Um, he asks, would you know if that, there was, that was an actual historical practice or, were, or just a creative choice from the artist? I haven't looked into that. I would suspect that Looking at the armor, if it's, if it's fancy dress armor, in other words, if it's not armor that they would wear out on the field, it, they've probably got it on over their court clothes. 
But if it's speed up armor, it's probably an adaptation of the arms. That would be my suspicion, although I have no, uh, no documentation for that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Deep breaths. Now we're going on to humongous seeds. This rectangular leaf becomes very, uh, very elongated. Oh, come on, stop. Um, let me go back to that, because that's something I'm gonna talk about. It becomes very, very elongated. I have not to date seen a picture where the sleeves drag on the ground. They're always a few inches off of the floor, okay? Uh, she has it over her arms, but it's certainly, she could put her arm through here and have it hang, totally hanging loose. Okay. Right. Um, I talked about this one a minute ago, where it's um, fastened several places up the sleeve. Can I ask you a quick question about that one? That yeah. that image, I see that see that kind of different, very different neckline from the other Spanish images, which go all the way to the neckline. Um, yes. So this is a, still a Spanish Im uh, image of Spanish dress. It's just a different, okay. a different. The, the Spanish controlled much of Italy during the 1600s, kind of the lower half. And so in that area, you see kind of a conglomeration of both the Italian and the Spanish. And Spanish and Italian nobles used the other country looking for wives. So a lot of times you'll see things like this, where it's a Spanish sleeve on, a, on an Italian neck, um, and that doesn't make it in any particularly less one or the other. The hair, do, the hair is, is kind of a combination. Again, these puffs, which I tried to recreate and didn't do very well at, uh, are very much Spanish. The sleeve is Spanish. The undersleeve is Italian. Hmm. The neckline is more Italian. So you see the cross culture there uh, during the second half of the 16th century very much. Thanks. Okay. Very interesting. Coming on for 11.30 now. I mean, half an hour. Okay, so here's that sleeve. And this is as close as I've seen to the floor. And you can still see there's a good hand's width. Not a span, but a hand's width between the floor. And, um, this is a much shorter one, but it's cut the same way. This is an, an, an English dress with Spanish sleeves. And it would have been uh, described as such. Particularly the English would have said, oh, that queen with her Spanish sleeves. Um, and you see again the larger undersleeve. This is much earlier. This is about 14, I want to say 1450. But this is the beginning of that, that enlarged sleeve. And this is probably where those long sleeves um, kind of copied from it. And it's totally closed on the front. And it's down probably to a few inches above her knee. Okay? And when I put all these pictures into the um, into the Google Drive, it'll have the notations of where it all came from. So you can go look at it and enlarge it and so forth on, the, on your own. Now this is right, right, right at the end of the period. But I wanted to show you the billowing sleeves and again, you've got that cross, the cross cut on the sleeve, as well as the vertical cut. And she's got the narrow window sleeves. This is probably 1605. I say that because of the rough, but the dress um, could be in the last 10 years, the last decade of the 16th century. Um, and again, she's got, she's got cute little frogs on her, on her upper sleeves. And then, She's got the, the open sleeve from there down. Okay, and I'm, I'm to the end of that. So I'm going to show you how Alceda suggests that the sleeve be hanged. Again, 
this is not to scale. This is much smaller than we would need to do it, but I needed to make it this size so it would fit on the. Love the patterning on your dress, by the way. <laughs> Beautiful fabric. Just last week, I was in a thrift store and saw a piece of fabric and said, oh, I've got to get that. I brought it home and laid it down next to this. It is this fabric. <laughs> okay, so. Um, um, you'll find this kind of sleeve in Alsega in three pieces usually. There's the pointy piece, there's the middle piece, and there's the top piece. So I'm going to cut this off just a little bit. The arm side is here. This is the width of the arm. So that this is the wrist. And it's cut straight for the circumference of the wrist. And then it's sloped down. And the back is curved, and there's various amounts of curve in it, but this gives you that very long sleeve, and you can make this longer or shorter, and you'll see that in Alsega's patterns. Um, I will put a link to both the English version, which has got bigger pictures, and commentary, and the, um, the Spanish version, which is a little tiny book about this big, which is a reproduction of his actual pattern book. Okay. So, Great, thanks. There's a seam here. There's a seam here. So this is cut in five pieces. So now I'm going to open it up and show you what it looks like inside. Can you cut it off and get it? It might res resemble a pair of wings once it's laid out completely flat. Indeed it does. I marked my door with so that I would make sure that it was in the picture. And it's just barely getting enough. And I made it small. Okay, so. Here's the wrist. Here's the forearm, the length of the seam down the front of the arm is straight. It comes straight for a little bit and then it's out. And here's the arm side down here. Now, if you want it longer, you just extend this. Let's see, you extend. Where am I now? Arms up. You extend that point. You extend the points out to make the sleeve longer. So here's your wrist. Here's the length of your uh, sleeve. But then you're going to make this bigger and this bigger to get your um, your hanging suit. Do you know why it was cut in so many pieces? I mean, because that looks like it li lies relatively flat. Is it, Was it because of the just the fabric usage and how it cut out or? or? Yes, what they did, what they did was they lay out the biggest pieces first and then the bodice because you don't want seams if you can help it down the bodice. Mm -hmm. And then you get the sleeve in what they called the cabbages, well, cabbages were the little tiny bits, but the, whatever was left over, you get the sleeves. And because the tailor got to keep whatever fabric was left, he would piece the sleeves so that he'd get a bit of fabric at the end. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess looking at that, that would be easy to achieve for us with our widths of, of yes. how, how, how width, uh, wide our fabric is woven nowadays, whereas it might have been a bit more challenging with, with narrower fabrics, depending yeah, on... That's why I put it all together into one piece. Mm. And um, the seams are going to be here. So that the front of the arm is all one piece, even though you're going to slit it. Mm -hmm. And then seam there. And you can make it bigger here and bigger here to get a longer sleeve. You can do it bigger here and here to get a bigger pop in the, in the back behind your sleeve. That's great. Thanks.
And you might want to make it in two pieces in order to get your, your pattern of your fabric to go the way you want it to be. Okay, now let's see. Okay, I finished that one. And again, to see, I know I've got one more. We haven't done the, the tops of the sleeves, have we? No. Only sleeves, shoulder. Did we do shoulder? No, we didn't. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on one second. And I will come back to this here. I wanted to leave the shoulders till the end, just in case we didn't have time to get to it. Are we good? Can't see anything but you and your lovely face. Oh, come on. Okay. This is driving me crazy because I know I've done this who knows how many times. Yes, no? Yes, we can see that fine. Thank you. Okay, now, I'm glad we've got more time than I had figured at this point. We will stop. Stop, stop, stop. Because the tops of the sleeves is where, personally, I spend more time. Because the sleeve is a sleeve. But the top of the sleeve can be really far out and crazy. Okay? Uh, this one has several different things involved. It's got a poof. It's got a fairly straight sleevey part. It's got a band here, and then it's got cutouts. And I need to remember that for the dress that I'm getting ready to make. Those cutouts. To document my cutouts. <laughs> so um, this has got like four different elements in the sleeve cap. And you see here how it's joined on to the uh, the shoulder band at the bodice, which again is not up on her shoulder like we would wear it. It's right out at the point. And that's really important when you're doing the sleeve cap with the very minimal um, uh, depth. Here she's got a very narrow band that's got poofs coming out of it. You can see what it is, is it's straps with underneath poking out. Now, would that be just fabric sewn inside? It could be. Would it be her chemise? It could be. But you've got straps here, and in a few places you see something poking out. Okay, questions? Okay. She's got a padded roll and this really cute little um, pointy Piccadilly kind of thing. Um, and I would think that the way this is done is this little piece goes all the way up to the seam. Oops, sorry. While this pad is then sewn on top of it. Okay, that makes sense. Lots of questions? It's okay. I've got one, but I'm still clarifying what they're actually asking. Just to let you know, you've got kind of, it's 11, four, uh, 40 minutes in, so. Yes, yes, I'm doing good. You're doing great. Okay, now, here you see a great big poof at the top of the sleeve. This big poof stops here, this is under sleeve. This is very like a Henry VIII coat. This is actually Charles V. So we're talking right around 1600 on this one. And I love this outfit, just saying. Uh, and this would be cut very much like the rounders, the pomegranate sleeve I've talked about, but shorter. Okay. Uh, that I said for our friend, the gentleman. This I do believe is allegorical because this is supposed to be um, astrology. But I love these sleeve tops. She's got one row of little tiny ruffles. She's got another layer that's scalloped, and then a longer layer that's scalloped that comes just about to her elbow, which you can see here from the bend in her elbow that it just touches her, her forearm. And she's got something hanging down in the back. 
And you can see that here and here. So I'm quite sure that there's a hanging sleeve here on the back, although this whole thing is probably make believe. But what wonderful okay. make believe. <laughs> I'm sorry? But what wonderful make believe. Yeah, I, I plan one day to do that, Russ. It's going to be way easier than the one I'm doing. This one, she's got, this is the top of her dress. She's got a, a, a puff. I don't think it's a stuff roll. I think it's just a puff um, because it doesn't have the hard look of the puff roll. And then she's got little tiny scallops along the bottom. This is a unique sleeve that I've only seen two like this. This one and one that is um, uh, Charles, Emperor Charles' daughter. It has a sleeve that's wrapped like this and fastened together. And um, it has sort of an Austrian, I mean, the other dress is definitely Austrian. So I'm wondering if that's where this came from. Although this is a Spanish princess in France. Okay. Um, this was, um, I don't know why this is here. I don't know why that's here. So I'm going to skip over it. Here you see the underslave is got the vertical stripes, the scallops at the bottom, and then the, the ropa, which is what this garment is called, the ropa has a sleeve that's got puffs at the top, bigger puffs here, a narrow bit of something, a strip of trim, and then the little scallops at the bottom. Quite extraordinary looking, isn't it? She's shredding. She's yeah. quite a bad. Just the whole stripey look is very, yes. very striking in this, that, this image. And stripes are very Spanish. Here's a nice, really close up of the, um, there's a word for them, I can't remember it now. Um, it's the, the piece is cut kind of in a, in a, um, a fat rectangle. And I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and they're, they're sewn on here. There's a little bit of something here and a little bit of something here on either side of the um, I think of the name of, it, of these uh, bits. And they usually, in the extent pieces that I've seen, do not continue under the arm. They start as very low on the arm as you can see from the outside and go over the top so that there's a good hand spin underneath the arm that does not have these hoofs on it. And they're usually smaller and getting larger as you go to the top. Okay? Here she's got two sets of rolls. These are the strips over probably a, a, a narrow roll with silk over it so that the silk can move out. And there's a band at the bottom. And that band at the bottom is probably a piece that goes all the way up to the shoulder seam so that the sleeves don't fall down her arm. They set the limit of how far down the um, arm the sleeves will go. Does that make sense? Anybody have a question about that? No questions at the moment, thanks. Okay. This is a um, very simple sleeve treatment where there's a trim around the um, arms eye of the ropa and around the top of the sleeve and they're fastened together. It looks like with some sort of toggle or frog. And it, it gives the whole outfit a very nice look and it's actually very, very simple to do. Here you'll see a cap over the top. This would be cut in a moon shape with flat ends and trimmed and then sewn on to the arm. Sewn on, sewn on to the arm here and the sleeve then is sewn on underneath. So that's really not as difficult as it looks. And again, that's gonna stop when you 
you get to the armpit. That's not going to go all the way under the arm because that would cause too much wear on it. Oops. Just letting you know that you need to be winding up if you um, now it's now um, quarter two. So you're oh, perfect, perfect. I've got about five more minutes. Conversation. Lovely. Okay. This one is also one of my favorites, and I'll make it for some guy someday when he finds me. Um, and it's trapezoids. And there's two layers of them, which means that the whole arm armhole is covered, but you can see the gap right here and the gap right here. And basically what that's saying is, I'm wealthy enough, I can put two rows of piccadillas on my slit top. And this is interesting because the um, the loops don't go straight like in all the others we've seen. They angle. And this one angles one direction and this one angles the other. <clears throat> and then she's got uh, scallops at the bottom of that. And she's got her huge over sleeve underneath that. So there's three rows of decoration at the top of this sleeve. With the huge kind of over sleeve, it looks like it's folded up and pinned or buttoned or tied or something? What do you think? Um, possibly. Honestly, I had not noticed that because I was focusing on this. Um, it may be because she's sitting and they don't want it to grab on the ground. Or it may just be that it's so long that it's pinned up so it doesn't drag on the ground. Yes, I mean, her sleeves are pretty opulent. So she might have sleeves so long that, oh my, I've just got so much fabric. I'll pin it up a little, you know. And I think that's the end of that one. So now, any questions, anybody? Actually, um, we have a, a personal question um, about you. Um, Leonor has asked about the background to your persona. She'd like to get to know you better. Oh, take my class of Andonia and Mujeres in Peru, which is tomorrow. Um, Illuminada was born in Lima, Peru, October 12, 1582, because there was no October 12, 1582. That's when the king and the pope conspired to take 12 days right out of the middle of October. Um, I'm sorry? Um, I didn't think I was muted. Okay. No, no I'm not. Um, Spanish ladies started coming to the New World in 1498. Columbus's third voyage had women aboard. Isabella, the Catholic king, stated that if we send men, they will conquer. If we send women, they will colonize. In other words, civilize the countries. Um, by 1600, the end of the SCA period, there were a thousand more Spanish doñas in Lima than there were Spanish men. And that did not count the several hundred that were in the um, convents. Okay, uh, The men fought each other, the men went on voyages, the men, there was some attrition there. The women tended to live longer. Uh, the reason I chose Peru is I was teaching third grade. I'm a Monday, me, I'm a, a school teacher. I was teaching third grade and got a history magazine for my students that said by 1600, there were Spanish women in what is now Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is factual, but not true, okay? Um, in 1598, a group from Mexico City traveled to the area around Albuquerque. The, the group was not prepared for the weather, for the desert for the conditions and the Spanish women did what we Spanish women are wont to do and crossed their legs and said not until we go home. The whole troop went back to Mexico City. Five years later they came to Albuquerque again and established the city much better prepared. Um, now Lima, Peru uh, was established in 1631 I think um, and so 
by uh, the time Illuminati is born, there is quite a large city there in, in uh, Peru. One of the reasons I chose to be from Peru is because women in Peru had lots of rights that they didn't in Spain. They could inherit over firstborn sons. So if I marry a rich guy and he's got some sons, when he dies, I inherit and they're SOL. Uh, <clears throat> I could hire a lawyer on my own behest and have them represent me in court, which in Spain you had to get a male relative to do for you. Um, there are stories of women in Lima who married a succession of wealthy husbands and inherited all of their estates and so forth and were quite well off. Illuminata is not that well off. Um, any other particular questions about my persona? People can unmute themselves, otherwise we're, we're at the point where we sadly have to wind up to give people the chance to answer the call of nature before the next exciting class. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to take this opportunity. Thank you all for attending. Thank you very much, um, Illuminata, for your time and all your research that you've put into this and for presenting yourself so beautifully to us. It's been really, really interesting. And uh, we look forward to um, being able to access any materials. We'd love you to share links to your favorite um, uh, resources, if you can. I think somebody's already shared a link to our I will share all of the pictures. I will take pictures of the pattern pieces. I will also include pictures of the pages from Alsega, where those came from.